the Battle of Jericho, Joshua 6. As the children of Israel prepared to conquer the Promised Land, they faced a very strong obstacle, the huge fortified city of Jericho. In this lesson, we will learn how God performed a miracle and gave them a great victory. Have you ever tried to jump hurdles? Hurdles are like fences that runners must jump over in a race. This girl is trying to cross a hanging bar by swinging with her hands. That can be hard to do. These kids are attempting to climb a wall with hooks. This would be like going up the side of a rocky mountain. All of these are examples of things that might be in an obstacle race. What is an obstacle? It is something that stands in the way. An obstacle can be a hurdle, a blockage, or an obstruction. Sometimes it is a problem that has a difficult solution or path to get to the answer. In this lesson, we are going to learn about a very large obstacle that the Israelites faced as they entered into the Promised Land. This was the huge walled city of Jericho. The children of Israel had to have great faith in the power of God to help them overcome. This lesson is found in the book of Joshua. Joshua is the first book of history in the Old Testament and was written by Joshua himself. This book tells the history of Israel's conquest of the Promised Land. Let's say the Old Testament books of history together. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Joshua and the Israelites had just come from the east side of the Jordan River. They were headed to the city of Jericho. In the city of Jericho were many people who do not obey God. They worshipped idols instead of the true God. And because they believed in false gods, God wanted the children of Israel to destroy them. Joshua had sent two spies into the city of Jericho to spy out the enemy. They said that everyone in the city was afraid of the nation of Israel. In the city of Jericho was a woman named Rahab. She had heard about the God of the Israelites and believed in him. Rahab risked her life by hiding the spies on her roof and helping them escape. She lowered them down on a rope out of her window, which was in the wall of the city. In exchange for her help, the spies had promised Rahab that she and her family would be saved when Joshua and the Israelite army entered the city. She was to hang a red rope out of her window to show which house was hers. Before the Israelites could attack the city of Jericho and enter into the Promised Land, Joshua had to get the people across the Jordan River. God had told Joshua to have the priests carry the Ark of the Covenant to the edge of the water. When the priests obeyed God and their feet 
touched the edge of the water, God miraculously opened up the Jordan River. God held back the river with a wall of water and the people crossed over on dry land. What an amazing thing! God wanted the people to remember this miraculous crossing by having 12 men take 12 stones from the riverbed and stack them up as a memorial. When future generations would see the stone memorial, they would be reminded of God's great power in causing the River Jordan to stop flowing downstream. They would know that God had great power and would protect his people. Now Joshua and the Israelites were ready to take the whole land, but doing this would not be easy. The Canaanites lived in the Promised Land, and they had strong armies ready to fight anyone who tried to enter their cities. They had built strong cities with huge, thick walls around them. The first city the Israelites had to conquer was Jericho. Jericho was a beautiful city with springs of water and many palm trees. It was known as the City of Palms, but Jericho was like a fortress. It had huge double walls around it, making it one of the strongest of the wall cities. The walls were so thick and strong that houses were built right into the walls. One evening, Joshua left the Israelite camp to go off by himself to pray and look over the city of Jericho to decide how to best have his army take the city. Jericho would not be an easy city to conquer. The people of Jericho even had their own army. The people of Jericho knew the Israelites were coming so they shut the gates to the city and waited for the battle to begin. Their soldiers were standing ready to fight and they were counting on the thick walls of their city and the protection of their false gods to win the fight. Jericho was a big obstacle. God wanted the people of Jericho to know that he was the true God and the one to be worshipped, not their false gods of wood and stone. Suddenly, as Joshua was thinking about this situation, he raised his head. He saw someone standing by him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua reached for his own sword as he moved away from the person. Are you friend or foe? Joshua asked. Neither, said the other person. I am captain of the Lord's host. Then Joshua realized that this was not just another man, but the commander of God's army of angels. It was Jesus Christ himself. Then God told Joshua to take off his shoes because he was standing on holy ground. Remember, this was just like the Lord had told Moses to do at the burning bush. Jesus, the commander of God's army, was here to give Joshua directions on how to fight this battle. How amazing this must have been for Joshua. Lord, the city of Jericho is surrounded by a huge, thick wall. The gates to the city are shut tight and guarded closely. Joshua, I have handed the city of Jericho over to you. I have also handed its king and its fighting men over to you. What shall we do, Lord? 
March around the city once with all of your fighting men. In fact, do this for six days. Have seven priests get trumpets made from ram's horns. These priests will carry the trumpets in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times. On this day, have the priests blow the trumpets as you march. When you hear a long blast on the trumpets, tell all of the men to give a loud shout. The wall of the city will fall down, and the whole army will go into the city. Yes, Lord, we will do as you have commanded. Priests, go and get the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. We're going to march with the Ark around Jericho, and I want seven of you to carry trumpets in front of the Ark. We will do what you tell us. Yes, Lord. Soldiers, you will move out. March around the city. Some of you will march in front of the Ark of the Lord. Some of you will march behind the Ark. The Ark must be guarded by all of you. Yes, yes sir. sir. Do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then you will shout. Yes, sir, Joshua. The soldiers did as they were told. They marched around Jericho for seven days. Then Joshua said, Okay, men. For seven days we have marched around the city of Jericho. Today we have marched around the city six times. Now we will march around the city wall one more time, but this time, priests, you will blow a long blast on the trumpets. We will do what you tell us, God. Soldiers, shout! The Lord has given you the city! Shout to the Lord! Shout! Israelites, the Lord has given us the city of Jericho. Let us praise the Lord! These were very unusual battle plans, weren't they? What do you think Joshua thought when he heard these instructions? I'm sure that Joshua thought this would be a very strange way to conquer a city. But he trusted God. So he passed the orders on to the people. And the Israelites listened to Joshua and got ready to do exactly what God had told them to do. The Israelites were to march around the city in a great procession. Soldiers were to be at the front. Then seven priests with trumpets of ram's horns followed by more priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant, which was the wooden chest that held God's law. As the Israelites marched around the city of Jericho, the priests blew their horns. The only noise was the sound of the horns and the stomp, stomp, stomp of thousands of marching feet. No one said a word. Six days in a row, the people marched silently around the city of Jericho, one time, just as God had told them to do. Everyone in the city must have heard the sound of the trumpets and watched as the Israelites walked around their city walls in silence. They probably were terrified as they kept waiting for the attack to begin. On the seventh day, the procession marched around the city once like they had done the previous six days. But instead of going back to camp, the people kept walking. They marched around the city seven times and then stopped. At the end of the seventh lap, when the priests sounded a long blast on their trumpets, Joshua commanded the army. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Only Rahab and her family are to be spared. 
no one is to take anything belonging to the people of Jericho because it all belongs to the Lord. When the trumpets blasted and the army shouted, the walls of the city collapsed. Suddenly, the big, tall walls of Jericho crumbled and fell down. And the army of Israelites marched straight in just as God had told them to do. The army charged over the ruins and took the city. God told Joshua and his army to destroy Jericho and all the people in it because they had put their faith in false gods. Joshua and his men obeyed God and killed all the people of the city. Joshua ordered the two spies to find Rahab's house, marked with a scarlet cord in the window, and led her and her family to safety. From that day on, Rahab and her family lived with the Israelites. Rahab had trusted in God's power, and she and her family were saved from destruction. The army was forbidden to loot anything they found in the city because God had said that everything was devoted or belonged to him. They were warned that looting would bring trouble on them and the whole camp. The items made of gold, silver, bronze, and iron were carried out of the city and put in the treasury of the Lord. The city was then set on fire. News of this amazing victory soon spread to all the people in the land of Cana, and everyone knew that the Lord was with Joshua. What a mighty God we serve! He can make the walls of a strong city fall. What joy Rahab and her family must have had on that day. How glad she must have been that she had helped save the spies. Eventually, Rahab would marry an Israelite man named Salome. They would have a son, which was Boaz, who would later marry Ruth. Many generations later, Jesus Christ our Savior would be born into this family. So, not only did God work a miracle in saving the nation of Israel from their enemies, he saved the ancestors of Jesus. God's strange plans to attack the city of Jericho would not make any sense to most commanders of an army. But the Israelites listened to God and trusted him. They obeyed and God gave them the victory. We often have fears, frustrations, and problems in our lives that stand as obstacles and keep us from living a life that is pleasing to God. These are like the walls of Jericho. Many of the commands in the Bible can seem hard to understand. We may wonder why God wants us to do things like be kind to people we don't even like or forgive people who are mean to us. But it's important for us to obey God just as he requests. Then God will give us victory, just like he took down the walls of Jericho. 
When we choose to obey God's commands, even the ones that we don't understand, we are showing that we trust God. Our memory verse is Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge the Lord and he will make your paths straight. Remember, God only wants the best for us. So we must always obey God. He deserves our complete trust. Let's say our memory verse again together. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge the Lord and he will make your paths straight. Let's pray. Father, there are many obstacles in our lives that keep us from living lives that are pleasing before you. But today we've been encouraged to have faith in your word and to obey you, even when we don't fully understand why you ask us to do the things you do. Please help us to trust and obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, let's obey God and trust His plans for us.